Hi, hi everyone. My name is Shauna Fretwell. I am a communications associate here on staff at the church. Um, specifically for me, that means that I do a lot with our website and I do our social media. I want to say thank you so much to Job Networking for having me today. Um, we are so grateful for all the work that they do in our community. Today, what I wanted to talk to everybody about just over the next few minutes is about staying open and specifically about staying open even after experiencing hardship or even a traumatic event. And um, the idea of staying open is something that I feel like I have never been specifically taught too much about, but rather learned through life experiences. And I wanted to share a little bit of my story today in hopes that you will find yourself um, in this as well, and that it will resonate with everyone in some way. Jamar Tisby recently said, it feels counterintuitive, but the more acquainted we become with our brokenness and woundedness, the more we open up to the possibility of wholeness and healing. This quote segues so beautifully into a passage of scripture uh, that I love where Jesus shows us what it looks like to stay open uh, to experiences and to people that uh, nobody else was terribly interested in being open to. Um, that passage is from Mark in chapter two, verses 13 through 17. And I'll share it with you quickly. It says, and then Jesus went again to walk alongside the lake. Again, a crowd came to him and he taught them. Strolling along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, at his work collecting taxes. And Jesus said, come along with me. And he came. Later, Jesus and his disciples were at home having supper with a collection of disreputable guests. Unlikely as it seems, more than a few of them had become followers. The religion scholars and Pharisees saw Jesus keeping this kind of company and they lit into his disciples. What kind of example is this? Acting cozy with the misfits. And Jesus overhearing shot back. Who needs a doctor, the healthy or the sick? I'm here inviting the sick, not the spiritually fit. For me, I am proudly one of these misfits and I love this entire exchange. From an early adolescent age, I had encounters with trauma. These events and the years to follow changed the course of my life and I found myself living alternatively to a lot of my peers. In those years, I began to lock down certain ideas in my mind. Ideas like good things were for other people, but not for me. And I became accepting of the breadcrumbs in life rather than believing that I too could ask for a whole slice. I was insecure about my lack of education and I considered anyone but myself to be more qualified to do anything of merit. And I was pretty closed off. I limited myself even before others had the chance. It became a comfort zone for me and I felt this way and just kind of stayed there. And it was my default in a lot of situations. Thankfully, through time and learning and growing, I began to heal and slowly open back up. In fact, I began to realize that one of the side effects of the prior years was that I was open to pretty much anything. I did not have the typical set of preconceived notions or set expectations that others might have had. And of course, we are all about healthy boundaries and we want to have good standards. But I said yes to a lot of really eclectic things. I was finding myself later in life and outside of what would be considered a traditional time frame. I practiced saying yes to some smaller things outside of my comfort zone at first. At one point, I taught painting classes to help supplement income for my family. And then I tried leading a hiking group for families with small children when I found myself very lonely in motherhood. I put myself out there and began learning things about myself. I learned that I did in fact have leadership skills. 
starting with a yes to even these smaller things, it turned out to be a really crucial building block in building up confidence. I can look back now and see that even these smaller opportunities had a common thread. They were preparing me for what was to come. When my youngest son was getting ready to start kindergarten, I knew that it was time for me to re-enter the workforce in a more formal capacity. I had been out of the workforce for about 10 years, aside from some nannying gigs and my painting classes, and I had no idea what getting back out there was going to look like. I actually had a fairly limited resume that included quite a few years of bartending and a little bit of time working in insurance. And as I was beginning to look around and put some feelers out there, I was offered a job as a workout instructor. Uh, you have to take a test and you have to pass a test to become a workout instructor. And this was terrifying for me. I had not taken a test or studied for anything in years, um, but I decided I would try. And I chose to believe there was no reason that I couldn't take the test and pass. I decided to be open. I did pass the test, but ultimately I came to find that it was just another building block. It's interesting that part of staying open is accepting that things seem like they will pan out one way, only to find out they served an entirely different purpose. I was offered a job as a part-time admin here at the church, and that was going to be better and more consistent pay. So once again, I said, yes, this job was a great fit. And again, I learned so much about dealing with people and was able to put a lot of what I had learned into practice. Who would have thought that all those years of bartending would have actually prepared me for a job at a church? I said yes to just about anything that was thrown my way professionally. And I considered it all currency for learning and growing both myself and my resume. My mind was pretty blown by some of the people I met and the conversations I was having. And truthfully, it all felt kind of surreal. A lot of old insecurities absolutely tried to rear their heads and sometimes they still do. But even in all that, I felt the nudge to try to do something more. And then right around the time I started to feel that nudge, COVID-19 entered our world and everything changed. Suddenly there was a huge need for a digital presence like never before. And in my world, that looked like social media. And say what you will about social media, it is here to stay and it is where the people are. Uh, I ended up finding myself in front of a camera because of social media a lot um, during COVID. And that took a lot of adjusting, um, but now I'm here talking to you and feeling a lot more capable than I would have 18 months ago. Um, I decided to go all in with this and spent a lot of time researching and watching and exploring the ways to make our social media presence fun and engaging, and it felt nonstop. I was thinking about it in my sleep. I had to wrangle others into my ideas, which actually turned out to be a lot of fun and once again was able to use people skills from the past. Uh, but please know the anxiety was extremely high at this time too. There were many other factors at play while this was going on. It was almost like we all had no choice but to stay open. There was so much that we could not control and we still can't control. And I don't know if that anxiety ever truly goes away. But staying open and knowing there is always something around the corner does help. A few months ago, I was offered a move into our communications department. This unexpected transition has ultimately launched what I believe is the career path I didn't know I was headed for. I don't mean to sound like a motivational poster, but it feels right, and that really means something. For the first time in my life, I feel like I might have an idea of what I really want to do when I grow up. I'm 36 years old, and I definitely took a long and windy road to get here. I also have absolutely no idea what comes next, but I have learned to get more comfortable with that idea. I recognize that everyone's situation is different. Um, I also fear that perhaps maybe in some ways I've oversimplified things in my brief overview, and I know that life is actually very complicated and can be very confusing. It is rare that anything is simple or easy. 
my heart does truly walk alongside yours as I offer these words of encouragement. I believe each person listening right now has more value than they even realize. I believe each person listening and watching deserves the opportunity to experience what being open can bring their way. And moreover, I firmly believe that you will be amazing at what comes your way when you are open. Keep shaking your fists at the heavens if that is what gets you through. Jesus can handle it. But don't let yourself shut down completely. That can feel easier than staying, what, staying open to what comes next. But there is more. I'll land the plane with this talk and wind things down with a quote by Gail King. She says, I know for sure that nothing is guaranteed. Life always changes. I know for sure that I'm open to all possibilities always. Let's just say my life is never boring. So thank you guys so much for letting me be here with you today to say a few words. I am um, very grateful and I have enjoyed so much this opportunity.